Amen. Grace and peace in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. morning. Welcome to Elevation United Methodist Church. Welcome to worship this morning. Those of you here at the church house, those of you who are worshiping at home, we're so glad that you've taken time to exhale at the end of this week and breathe in the goodness of God and breathe out the gunk and the mess that this week brought you. And so we're here to do that, and we're here to praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so let's begin this morning by doing just that as we share together in our opening prayer. God of our hopes and dreams, we are empty and long to be filled. We are hungry and long to be fed. We are lost and long to be found. Gather us into your love and pick up the pieces of our lives. Just as Jesus gathered up the fragments of the five loaves and two fish that remained after feeding the 5,000. Call us anew to eat our fill and to find our true nourishment in Jesus, the bread of heaven. Amen. Our praise and worship song this morning is come. Now is the time to worship. Y'all sound good this morning. Friends, let's affirm our faith together this morning with the historic, the ancient, uh, the powerful Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to turn to your neighbor on your left and your right. Share the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding. And kingdom kids, come on up front. Morning, buddy. 
Kingdom kids, come on up, and you can bring your backpacks too. Well, I'd like both of y'all have pretty shoes on this morning. Yeah, you're welcome. What's wrong? <laughs> Good job, Everett. Oh. Yeah, man, absolutely. Listen, the bigger kingdom kids can come up here too if they want to. All right, that's fine. Hey, Layton. You got Spider Man. Very cool. All right. You've got that too. Awesome. Yeah, that's all right. So, hey, Everett. <laughs> you were just going on somewhere else, weren't you? Come on. You want to come over here? You want to come over here? You want to come sit with me? There you go. Good job. All right. Yeah. Oh, he stretches, doesn't he? Holy cow. Wow. So before we say our blessing over our backpacks and, and, and do everything like that, yeah, don't do him like He won't stretch like that. I want to show you all something. And um, Annie, I'm going to ask you because I bet you're probably out of my group up here this morning. No, Colin, I bet you can. So I'm going to ask Colin to read the first part. I want you to read those two words right there. Can you read that first word? Sound it out. That's tough, isn't it? That's a long word. You want to read that? Can you read that? They are sponged up a little bit. What's the last word? Yeah, good job. I thought she said <laughs> So the last word's Jesus. Okay, so the last word is Jesus. The first two words are property of. So this is property of Jesus. So he must have, he must have written on this calculator that this is my calculator. And we found it here at the church, so I don't know what to tell you, but it says property of Jesus. So I'm just going to assume that it was Jesus' calculator, right? I mean, that's, wouldn't y'all do that if you found a calculator? It said property of Jesus, right? You would think, yeah, he stretches. You would think so, right? So I want you to look at it, pass it around. There's a couple of buttons missing, it looks like. Hmm. Why do you think the button? I'm, we're going to get it all around, I promise. Why do you think those buttons are missing? Anybody have an idea? Well, they're, they're buttons. Look, the buttons are missing. Jesus must have popped them off. Look. See how there's two buttons missing? See all those buttons? But there's two missing right there. Why do you think? I don't know. Why do you think? Why do you think the buttons are popped off, Everett? You know? Any idea? So there's, there's four buttons on here right in a row. There's a multiplication button, okay? You'll learn about this as you get older. Addition, y'all are doing adding already, right? Two plus two is four, four plus four is eight, that kind of thing, yep. But the two buttons that are missing off of Jesus' calculator are the one for division and subtraction. Wow, why do you think Jesus popped the division and the subtraction button off of the calculator? Why do you think he did that? Do you think it was because he wants his people to stay together and, and invite more folks in? Jesus is, Jesus is the, the savior of multiplication and addition, right? We're going to talk this morning. Remember the Bible story we talked about where Jesus fed the 5,000? First of all, do you remember what the, what the Bible story told us? It was more than 5,000 people, right? Why was it more than 5,000 people? Do you all remember? Why was it? Anybody out there want to take a guess? Women and children. Y'all didn't count. Sorry. Back in those days, y'all didn't count. Not when they took a roll or anything like that. I apologize. So it was closer to 9,000 people probably that Jesus fed that day. And Jesus could have said, you know what? I, listen, we don't have the food. I'm tired. His cousin had just died, John the Baptist. You know, we've talked about him before. Jesus could have said, listen, I'm done. I'm over it. Send them people home. Let them get their own food somewhere else. But that doesn't sound like Jesus, does it? Mm -mm. Jesus said, you know what? 9,000? Fine. Set some more down if we need to. Five loaves and two fish? Fine. I'll bless it and multiply it, and we'll serve all these people. Right? That's what he said. He didn't send anybody away. 
He made that food enough to feed everybody. And they all got filled, and they all took some home, too. Stretches good, doesn't it? That's, hold on a minute. Leighton, you're about to preach, and you don't even know it. Come here. Come here a minute. I'm serious. Come here. All right, I want you to sit up here, and I want you to stretch that thing out like you just did for me. Show everybody. Hold it up real high and stretch it. <laughs> Jesus took that food, and he stretched it. He stretched it. And he made it enough for everybody. And not only did he stretch it and make it enough for everybody, he stretched their faith that day so that they would believe that he was, that he was God, that he could perform miracles and that he could meet their needs. So remember, now, is this really Jesus' calculator, Annie? No, because he didn't have a calculator back in those days. But I don't know, maybe it is. But if he did have one, I feel pretty certain that he would pop those two buttons off right there. Because he wants to be our savior of addition and multiplication. He wants to see us grow in our love, not only for him, but in our love for others. Can we do that this week? Y'all getting ready to go back to school? What a great time to add people into your circle, right? And not take people away. To show them the love of Jesus that way. Can we do that this week? All right, let's pray together. Can you pray with me? You guys repeat after me, okay? Dear God. Thank you for being our Savior and for adding and for multiplying our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, buddy. Yeah, that one doesn't stretch like that, though, does it? Don't break him. He doesn't stretch. All right, so I would like um, for all of our kingdom kids to stand up, and y'all can either, you can put your backpack on or you can hold it there um, in front of you, whatever you want to do. Alexa, I'd like you to come up. What other teachers do we have this morning? Kim, come on. Any other teachers? What about, what about former teachers? Beverly Allen, I know you served in the school system for many years. Jerry Allen, come on up. I know you did. Yes, you did. Come on. Miss Sue, don't shake your head no. Any other former teachers, former educators? Yep, come on. Administrators, principals, vice principals, anything like that? No, yeah, there will be. All right, y'all come on up here. Thank you. Let me reach through here for just a minute, though. Shake your head at me. What in the world? <laughs> so tomorrow is a big day, and, and Ben is probably like, man, I've been in school. Ben's doing the CTLA program at Johnston Community College. They started back August. Come on. Come on. Come on, Kim. I mean, Emily, come on. Come on, Ben. All students, come on. Come on. So Ben's like, man, I started back August 1st. Now, now you're going to bless all these people? Well, sorry, that's the way it goes. Most of the folks start back tomorrow, August 29th. And so, y'all, teachers have such a demanding, demanding job right now. I think it's more demanding, Alexa, if I'm speaking out of turn, or Kim, I'm speaking out of turn. I think it's more demanding than it's ever been. In, in the time that you all have done it. Um, we read about all the, all the bad stuff every, every week, teacher shortages, teacher burnout, and that's real. But I want us to celebrate this morning the good that they do, okay? The, the serving that they do, the servant heart that it takes to be a teacher. And so what I want to do this morning, and Justin, will you help me, buddy? Will you pass out one of these pencils to each one of our kingdom kids and to our teachers please everybody that's up there I got enough for everybody I think and if I don't I'll give you one uh, after worship so this teacher uh, this teacher this pencil has a uh, has a prayer stapled to it it's not sharpened so you got to sharpen your own pencil I'm sorry um, but hopefully when you're using it this year kingdom kids and teachers if you're using it this year you'll remember that you are prayed for and that you are loved daily by these folks here and by others um, in the community. And so what I'd like for us to do now is I'd like to, while Justin is, is passing those out, I'd like for everybody to extend their right hand up here to our kingdom kids, to our teachers, to our administrators, as we pray a blessing over them at the beginning of a new school year.
At the beginning of a new school year, O God of wisdom, we offer thanks and praise for the gift of new beginnings and for the opportunity to learn and to wonder. We pray for teachers, for students, for staff, that this year might be rewarding for all. Be with us as we face the challenge of new tasks, the fear of failure, the expectations of parents, of friends, and of self. In our learning and our teaching, may we grow in service to others and in love for your world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Y'all give them a round of applause. Send them off with excitement and wonder and uh, eagerness to learn this year and to expand your minds and to just grow closer again to Jesus and to each other, okay? All right, you guys can have a seat. Thank you so much for coming up here and doing that. I am the son of two educators, and so I know what it's about to have Colin's like, wait a minute, you got a mom and dad? I do, man, Colin, I got a mom and dad, for real. And they both were teachers, or Connor, sorry, Colin. I had it right the first time. They both were teachers. So I know what that's about. We want to transition now to our uh, time of Jesus sightings and, and prayer requests. Um, any, and uh, ushers, if you could, yep, Joey's ready. Any, any Jesus sightings? Don't have any Jesus sightings written in our book this morning. Any Jesus? Denise has got one. Hang on one second. Joey's coming around to you over there. Good morning. Good um, morning. Tuesday morning, very early Tuesday morning, my son was parked on the side of the road in his tractor and trailer from work where he shouldn't have been parked, and he was hit. He was hit by an extra wide load traveling on the road at 3 a.m. in the morning, mm. and long story short, everybody is okay, but it's truly amazing and a miracle that nobody got hurt. Yeah. The gentleman in the other truck had his seven-year-old son mm. in his truck in a day cab, and he ended up spinning out, landing on the wires on the center divider, and jackknifed his truck. And my son was just parked on the side of the road, but he hit my son so hard in his truck. But mm. like I said, everybody's okay, but that was a big Jesus sighting yeah. for us and our family. Absolutely. So. And unfortunately, a brand new truck. <laughs> yeah, less Austin. than 2,400 miles on it. Yeah, brand new. But that's all right. Truck can be replaced. Right. Uh, lives can. So we're thankful. Thank you, Denise, for sharing that. Any other Jesus sightings this morning that we want to share? Come on, Joey, run up here. Hurry. Come on, run, run. Let's go. Where are we at? Put them legs in motion. Veronica. Good job. I just want to let everybody know that my sister Jackie had all of her surgeries. They did do uh, her pancreas had a, a, a cyst on it. They said it's benign, so that's wonderful. Thank you. And it, she's at home and she's doing well. Amen. Thank you. We've been praying for Jackie Bailey. She's uh, on our prayer list as we continue to roll back. Hey, Joey, come on back. Kitty's got one. Um, and so we, uh, we are thankful and continue to pray for Jackie for sure. I have a lady that comes once a week to help me keep my house clean since I've had my surgeries. And she remembered my birthday. Aw. She remembered it on Wednesday. And uh, she brought me the best tasting cookies from Carly C. Nice. Oatmeal raisin. They must have melted that butter because they were so <laughs> thin and so crispy. But um, it just lifted my heart and made me feel good. And she gave me such a big hug. Aww. And so um, I'm real thankful for that. Good. Amen. Thank you, Kitty. Any other Jesus sightings that we want to share this morning? I want to lift up a couple of prayer requests that we have written in the birth, a book. Excuse me. First of all, please remember um, the family of Margaret Hobbs. Margaret was uh, Doreen Creech's mother, and so we want to lift up Margaret's family. And, and obviously, um, her daughter-in-law, Terry, is a United Methodist pastor, retired former United Methodist pastor, who came out of this church. And so we lift up uh, Terry and Robert and, and obviously Doreen Shannon, Peyton Holden. Peyton particularly, he was very, very close to his grandmother, and so we want to lift up that entire family. And again, the services are Tuesday at 3 o'clock at Rose and Graham with a visitation about an hour and 15 minutes um, before the service. So uh, please keep Doreen and her family and Shannon, all those folks, in your prayers as they uh, celebrate and mourn uh, the loss of Miss Margaret. And then uh, Sean and Camille, this is from Sue Stevenson. Sean and Camille arrived home last night uh, feeling very sick and tested positive for COVID. I'm sorry, Sue. Um, 
What is the last thing? Ten day, oh, after a ten day vacation. Well, that's a heck of a way to come home after vacation, but um, that's right, yeah. So glad they're, glad they're home, glad they're safe. Sorry they got a five days now of just kind of hanging out with each other, I reckon, but that's okay. That'll draw them closer together, right? So we uh, pray for Sean and Camille, absolutely. Any other prayer requests that we want to share this morning? Yeah, Joey, that's cool. Oh. <laughs> this morning. Uh, last week, I lifted up my neighbor, yeah. Patricia. Her last name is Avery. Thank you. And I have found out that she is terminal. Uh, so they're just trying to shrink the tumors in her body and to give her whatever they can her for life. So yeah. she definitely needs our prayers. Guys. I'm so sorry. Patricia Avery. Thank, Thank you, you for finding out the last name. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, Adam. Um. My Aunt Pat, she broke her wrist, so uh, she's been having a hard time with that, so we just remember her. Can't swing that golf club for a while. I know she's going to be struggling with that. Pat Krause, keep Pat uh, in your prayers, please. Come on, Joey. You're doing good, man. If you need a break, give it to Don. He'll take over for you. <laughs> Miss Norma first, and then we're going to hit Miss Linda after that. So hang tight right there. My sister, Malin, is having cancer surgery, has come back for the third time. Mm. And then my brother-in-law, Leland Allen, he needs prayer. Yeah. Bless her. She's had so much to deal with already. And now oh. the Malin and Leland Allen. Mm -hmm. And then Linda Gilbert. Oh, sorry. She already got it. Good job, man. Yeah. yeah. I pray for protection for my grandson, mm -hmm. AJ, and everyone else on the highway because he's starting driver's ed <laughs> this week. Know all about that. Any other prayer requests that we want to lift up this morning? Oh, Michelle, over here, Joey. No, with other people at home need to hear you. That's why we're doing it. Yeah. I want us to keep in prayer. My sister-in-law, Sherry Benson, she's having knee surgery tomorrow. Okay. We will keep Sherry in our prayers. Thank you, Michelle. Any others? Almost had to flip the page and get a, a new page and that's a, that's a good and a bad thing. The good thing is that, that when we do flip that page, God is right there reading those requests, knows them already. So it gives us comfort to be able to share those this morning, to be able to uh, lift up not only our praises and our prayers, but also lift up our silence, to give God our lament, our worry, our grief. So I invite us to go to God in prayer now and to, to draw close to God and be encouraged because when we do that, God draws close to us. Let us pray. Merciful and gracious God, this is always a special time in the, the order of worship, a time where we can let our voices be heard, where we can lift up our, our prayers and our petitions to you and also our praises, oh Lord. Help us not forget to do that. Help us not to forget to lift up our thankfulness to you. You are a God of steadfast love and faithfulness and and so often, Lord, we are not, and yet there is grace for the journey. There is forgiveness and mercy for us all. And that grace and that forgiveness, that mercy is found at the foot of the cross. And so, yes, Lord, we give thanks for the cross. We give thanks for that precious blood of Jesus Christ washing our sins away, but we also celebrate that the cross didn't have the final say. That our Savior shocked the world and rose three days later, sharing with us the promise of eternal life when our short time here on earth is through, but also the promise of new life. The promise of being born from above, as Jesus told Nicodemus. New life in and through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us, O oh Lord, to not be wasteful of that new life. 
Help us each day to look for those ways that we can serve and love others in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who gives us the invitation to new life. Heal us, O Lord. We need your healing power now more than ever. We need to feel the power of our great physician coursing through our veins. And so we give this time of prayer to you. We lay it at your feet. We ask you to consecrate it, make it holy. And bless us as we bless your holy and perfect name. We lift up this prayer. We give you our praises in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples and who continues to teach us to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If our ushers will come forward now, we will continue to celebrate, continue to worship as we return a portion of what God blesses us with each week celebrating with our tithes and our gifts this morning. Amen. Please stand if you're able. and loving God, we give you thanks. 
for the many, many ways in which you are so generous and so loving, faithful, steadfast to us all. Use these gifts. Use us so that together, as one body, we can share the kingdom of heaven here on earth. We ask these things in Jesus' name and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And together, all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Friends, before you're seated, if you'll share in the prayer of illumination with me. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> so friends, if you remember... I don't know, gosh, it was probably, hang on one second, it was probably about six months ago I, I preached from this text that I'm about to share with you now. It's Isaiah 55, chapter 1 through 5. And, and near the end of the, um, I'm a little emotional today, y'all, I apologize. But near the end of the sermon, Colin just hollered out, do you remember? You remember? What'd he say? Do you remember? Wait just a minute. Do you remember what he said? Ho! And so since I'm going to share this, this scripture again this morning, in addition to our gospel lesson, I thought I would ask Colin to help me, okay? You ready? Hang on. Let me, let me get ready. So this is Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 5. And hear now the word of God. Ho! Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Great job. You can go back and sit down if you want to. Thank you. Give Colin a hand. And then our gospel lesson this morning is found in the gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them. He cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full, and those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on all of us gathered here. Empower the words of my mouth, the meditation of our collective hearts, so that together they might be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Listen to these three quotes. One is from Albert Einstein. One is from Indian mathematician known as the human computer, Shakuntala Devi. And one is from Polish mathematician, Stefan Banach. First, Einstein. Pure mathematics is, in its way, the poetry of logical ideas. Next, Devi. Without mathematics, there's nothing you can do. Everything around you is mathematics. Everything around you is numbers. And finally, Bannock. Mathematics is the most beautiful and most powerful creation of the human spirit. With all due respect to these great thinkers, I could not disagree more. Math is hard. Math is also not my strong suit. I think it's fair to state that before we go any further. I am not a math scholar. I did not win any academic awards for my mathematical prowess in high school. In my first year at Lenore Ryan University, I took finite math and made, with the help of an outstanding tutor provided to me by the football team, a C+. Plus. That was the only math I had taken in my college experience up to the time I enrolled in North Carolina Wesleyan in 2014 to finish my undergrad degree. Back in the day, my major was always going to be history. And so math never seemed to be a subject that was on the radar of a history major. I remember filling out that application and stressing over the fact that that finite math in 1987-88 for sure would not transfer to North Carolina Wesleyan some 30 plus years later, or almost 30 years later. And I would have to take at least one math as I pursued my BA in religious studies from there. Well, to my surprise, and this is totally a God thing, I did not have to take any more math. That finite math did transfer and the rest, as they say, is history. No pun intended. Do you know who was good at math? Jesus. He knew that day in the Gerasenes that there were more people present than food available. He did some quick ciphering, as Jethro Bodine would say, and he figured that there wasn't enough food available to feed the hungry crowd that had gathered to hear him preach. What to do? What to do? Send them home without a meal? Tell half of the crowd to leave and come back tomorrow and maybe we'll have gathered up more food and be able to feed all of you then. Or take the meager portion... We don't hear about the young child in Matthew's text, but take the meager portion of a young boy, multiply it, and feed the multitude that was gathered. Not only feeding their physical needs, but satisfying their spiritual ones as well. Yes, friends, in first century Palestine, it may not have been an actual subject, but our Savior showed that day that he was proficient in the good math. Week four of our five-week sermon series, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. Quick math, it's a five-week sermon series. We're in week four. How many more weeks do we have left? Yes, so y'all are good at math. Last week, we talked about Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The choice that they had to make early on in their captivity under Babylonian rule. We talked about the fact that choices are hard. They're hard. Very rarely are choices easy, like the game we played with Annie and Claire. Our choices have consequences. They can have positive consequences lasting a lifetime. They can have negative consequences lasting the same lifetime. And we talked about the importance of, as disciples, making sure that our choices are of God. Recognizing the subtleties of these choices that might make us believe they are of God, when in actuality they are of the enemy. But we didn't stop there. 
We also talked about the provenient grace shared with us all. Whether we make the right choice or we make the wrong one, grace is always present. Grace is always readily shared with God's people. And today we find ourselves in Matthew's gospel. Listening to the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 gathered that day. And as I mentioned right off the bat, it's important to remember. And the Bible story had a cute way of reminding the children at VBS that 5,000 is a little bit of a misleading number. You see, when this story was first put to parchment, you only counted the men who were present. Scholars estimate that with women and children present, the number is closer to 9,000 people gathered that day in the Gerasene region near Bethsaida. Now, this type of math is important in and of itself. Everyone deserves to be counted. Everyone. And it also makes the miracle even more impressive. But why is Jesus even here in this region? Let's go back and listen to verse 13 again. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat. This is human Jesus, y'all. Withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. Heard what? What could make Jesus withdraw by himself in a boat to a deserted place all alone. Well, it was the death of his cousin, John the Baptizer. A gruesome death. At the hands of King Herod's men, at the behest of Herod's wife. Jesus is obviously rattled by this news. And needs a little alone time to process things. But he doesn't get much in the way of seclusion because Matthew reminds us that the crowds followed him on foot. And that when Jesus saw this, he had what for them? Compassion. Compassion for them, and he healed them. It was this compassion that caused Jesus to gently rebuke the disciples and instruct them to give the crowd something to eat. But you see, the disciples were using flawed math. When they told Jesus that it had never worked because all we got is five loaves and Two pieces of fish. Jesus flips the script as Jesus always does. And showed them, the people gathered that day, and he shows us what his good math looks like. Now, when I was a junior in high school, I took Algebra 2. And I had a great teacher, and Joey, I don't think he was there when you were there. Eddie Zell. Was Mr. E. Zell there when you were there? Eddie Zell. Ed was a great teacher, Mr. Ezel. Sorry, I call, he told last time I saw him, he said, boy, call me Ed, you're 50 years old. And I was like, man, I can't do it. Mr. Ezel was a great teacher, one of my favorite people. But he had a bit of a spittle problem, y'all. I'm not kidding, he spit on you. He couldn't help it. But he would get all wound up and excited and tell us, Y'all, the numerator has got to equal the denominator. And if it don't equal, you're dead. You're D-E-A-D, dead. And when he would say that, if you were sitting on the front row, you got a little wet. (laughs) Spittle aside, (laughs) he was right. And Jesus knew this too. He understood that the common denominator and his good math was meeting the needs of the people gathered there that day. The Gospels are peppered with examples of Jesus meeting needs, of Jesus not leaving people the way that he found them. The woman who has been at the waist for 18 years healed her, and on the Sabbath, no less. The woman who had hemorrhaged for 12 years healed by her merely touching the tassel of Jesus' tunic. Zacchaeus and Nicodemus, hard hearts turned soft. Sinners and tax collectors told that they too have a seat at the table 
of grace. The list goes on and on and on. And these folks, some 9,000 strong, gathered that day in the Gerasenes, had a physical and a spiritual need met. They ate till they could eat no more, and they witnessed our holy mathematician multiply their faith. It begs the question, are we working on our math skills when we recognize a need in our communities? Are we able to see that the people on the fringes of society, the marginalized, the oppressed, are the folks that Jesus needs us to perform holy algebraic equations on? Or are we looking inward and seeking to meet our own needs, neglecting to do the math the right way? Because the minute we take our minds and our hearts and our, our eyes off of that truth, the equation becomes unsolvable. Looks kind of like that up there. No matter how hard you try to balance that equation, it won't work. And it won't work because the holy mathematician didn't devise the equation to be solved in any other way. There isn't another formula out there because the formula Jesus shared made sure that we would solve the equation and do the math the right way. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you shall also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me, the common denominator is meeting the needs of God's people and solving the equation is only done by loving folks. It's only done by making sure everyone is fed. A couple of weeks ago in a clergy group that I'm a part of, someone shared a picture of an altar table that had an interesting inscription. Most of you have seen altar tables that will share the reminder to do this in remembrance of me or maybe IHS, which is a Christogram, an ancient way of writing the word Jesus Christ. But this altar or communion table had the words, has everyone been fed, carved into the front. Has everyone been fed? Has everyone been given a seat around the table of grace and had the Lord's Supper shared with them? Have we made every effort possible to make sure that everyone knows that they are invited? And have we done our level best to feed them? Because the good math requires us to not take away any leftovers until we've done just that. The text says, and all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. Everyone ate. Everyone was full, not only from the physical meal they received, but also from that spiritual blessing that Jesus shared with them that day. Jesus doesn't want us to take away any leftovers until all of his children have been fed with physical food, yes, but more importantly, with the bread of life, with the bread of heaven. Jesus also doesn't want us to only share the fragments of our lives. We must be willing to share all that we have and all that we are with the folks in our communities that Jesus puts in our paths. We can't share fragments of ourselves and then invite folks to come and be a part of our community. No, we need to feed them. A real meal at times, yes. 
but always a meal of grace and mercy till they are full. And then and only then may we take away any fragments that may be left over because you see church and this is so important if Jesus had had a calculator so this isn't really Jesus' calculator I'm sorry if Jesus had had a calculator or an abacus or whatever the counting apparatus was of his day I feel certain he would have removed the buttons the dials, the beads, whatever the case may be that corresponded to subtraction and division. Because you see, Jesus is all about addition and multiplication. Jesus is all about saying, not enough room at the table, we'll make room. Pull up a chair. 9,000 people need to be fed, no problem. Don't send anyone away, we'll make it work. One of my own disciples is going to betray me into the hands of Jewish authorities. I'll share my last meal with him as well. Division and subtraction are tools of the enemy, not of Jesus. following is from John Wesley's sermon number 75 on schism preached March 30th 1786 it is evil itself to separate ourselves from a body of living Christians with whom we were before united is a grievous breach of the law of love it is the nature of love to unite us together the greater the love, the stricter the union. It is only when our love grows cold that we can think of separating from our brethren. The pretenses of separation may be innumerable, but want of love is always the real cause. Otherwise, they would still hold the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Pay attention, please, to this last sentence. It is therefore contrary to all those commands of God wherein brotherly love is enjoyed. My apologies to my sisters for the archaic language, but brotherly and sisterly love is enjoined. It's that last sentence that is so important. It is therefore contrary to all those commands of God wherein brotherly love is enjoined. Jesus does not know how to do the math of division and subtraction. Period. Jesus only knows the good math of addition and multiplication. Jesus wants to see his kingdom grow and flourish. Jesus wants us to make disciples and transform the world. Math is hard. Discipleship and living in community with folks is hard. There is nowhere in the scriptures that said this is an easy path. There is nowhere in a book of discipline or a book of common prayer or any book that you can find that says belonging to a body of Christ will be easy. It is as hard as doing algebraic equations. The world wants us to be divided and subtracted. But the good mathematician, the good shepherd, tells us this. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. Friends, start sharing the good math of Jesus Christ. The math of addition and multiplication. Start sharing that math today. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
I invite you to stand if you're able as we will sing the first four verses of Old Four A Thousand Tongues to Sing on page 57 in your hymnal, also on the screen. And if you feel the need to come and lament this morning, if you feel the need to cry out, the altar is open. The altar is yours. There's comfort to be found at the foot of the cross. Let's sing together, Old Four A Thousand Tongues to Sing. First four verses. Peter, leave that up there one second. Go back to verse 3. Just read that. Jesus, exclamation point. Ho! Jesus. The name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrows cease. Tis music in the sinner's ears. My ears. Your ears, tis life and health and peace. He breaks the power of canceled sin, sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood availed for me. That's your benediction. Go in peace and share the good mass of Jesus Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. You may be seated. We'll go over some announcements real quick before we head down to the uh, fellowship hall for a sausage biscuit this morning. So the first thing I want to announce is that we will gather for upcoming tomorrow morning. Uh, my covenant group is not going to meet, so we will gather tomorrow morning for upcoming 9 o'clock um, at Grill on the Hill. Um, again, you may have received this one call beginning Wednesday, August 31st. That's this Wednesday here at the church, and for the next, I think it's six Wednesdays until October 1st, 5th, excuse me, the church is going to be open for a time of prayer from 6 to 8 p.m. This won't be an organized worship service. It'll just be a time for you all to come and, and simply be in prayer. It's not a time to come and fellowship and talk and, you know, communicate. It's a time to come and be silent and still and listen for that still, small voice and pray. So I invite you to do that beginning Wednesday night, August 31st, and every Wednesday up till October 5th, 6 to 8 p.m. The uh, Elevation United Methodist Church Christian Women's Club is going to the movies September 6th. That's uh, Tuesday, is that right? Yep. Tuesday, a week from Tuesday to see Secondhand Lions. Uh, please contact Linda if, uh, to prepay on or before August 29th if you wish to attend. And y'all will meet at the church here at 1015 and then leave to go over to Smithfield. Yeah, Linda. Oh, cool. Oh, awesome. Very cool. Good folks over there. Um, had a chance, unfortunately, to know them quite well when I was in Selma, so they're good folks. Good for them. So there is no charge. So you do not need to prepay by August 29th. Just meet here at the church. Would you like a head count? Do you want them to... Okay. Okay. I don't have my pen with me, but go to Parish. I believe it's parishfh.com. You can find their phone number there and call them to register, or you can call Linda Gilbert to register by September 2nd. 
so that you can go see the movie Secondhand Lines. That's a great movie. Um, at, I'm assuming it's at the Howl uh, in downtown Smithfield. Oh, they're showing it at the real cinemas? Okay. I like going to. Oh, that's cool. Okay. I like going to the Howl, but Smithfield's cool too. But yeah, that's awesome. Free popcorn and a drink. Come on, y'all. Only ladies? Dang. I'm just kidding. That'll be, a, that'll be a, wonderful, a wonderful outing for you all. So by September 2nd, please let Linda know or uh, call the parish funeral home and, and register with them. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for the clarification, too. Um, remember, it's almost time for the golf tournament, y'all. We sent out letters at the end of this week, so you all will be getting a letter soon. Sponsors past will be getting a letter soon. Uh, October 7th is the date of the tournament, so get your team ready. Uh, get ready to go out. Once again, I've already spoken to God. Weather's going to be perfect that day. It's going to be about a high of 64, I think he told me. So just, uh, just be ready. Get your team together and, uh, and be ready to play. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's October 7th. Be ready for that. Emily, did you have your hand up? Okay. That's right. Thank you. Emily's, Emily's High School, West Johnson, has their prayer walk today at 4 o'clock. I believe they're the last on the stop, so I believe McGee's, uh, McGee's Elementary is at 2, McGee's Middle is at 3, and then West Johnson is at 4. I believe I'm right um, about that. So that is something, if you're free this afternoon, you want to go um, and take advantage of that. Thank you, Emily. Very cool. Absolutely. Thank you, Emily. And be on the lookout and, and the hear out for something that's coming for us to do here um, at Elevation as well as food related. Linda was talking to me about it this morning. You'll, have, you'll hear more about information about that um, soon. Let's celebrate some birthdays. Sarah Caldwell. She walked out August 29th. Sarah Caldwell. I'm not going to ask how old she is, Adam. Don't, don't you say. But she has what? 3 0. Dag. Oh, man. That's a big one. He just said it quick, too. He didn't even. Think about it. Hesitate. Well, we, we, that's right. We, we, listen, mine's the exact opposite. Sean and I both graduated in 1987, but she loves to tell people that I'm 11 months older than she is. So when I turn a certain age, she's got 11 months to catch up with me. So I tell people we're the same age. She says, no, we're not. And so very good. Sarah will celebrate her 30th birthday on August 29th. Sarah, if you can hear me out there, that was Adam that said you're going to turn 30. Um, Camden McLam, we look forward to celebrating Camden's birthday on August 1st. Joshua Sullivan, his birthday is September 2nd. And Debbie Higgins, who is another proud grandmama, she sent me a picture yesterday of, I believe, Jacqueline Kelsey uh, is her name. And so we celebrate the birth of Jacqueline Kelsey and also celebrate Debbie's birthday on September 3rd. And then Howard and Debbie McKinney have an anniversary on August 28th. Any birthdays or anniversaries that we missed this morning? Wow, that's awesome. Happy birthday to Ms. Jones. Ms. Phyllis Jones will be 80 tomorrow. That's awesome. Well, let's go to God in prayer. Let's bless our time together in the fellowship hall and give thanks for our time of worship this morning. God, we do give you thanks for your presence with us this morning, for our time of worship, for our time of fellowship that is forthcoming. Bless the food, the many hands that brought it to our table. May it be used to nourish our bodies physically. May we be nourished spiritually by the conversation and the fellowship that is had around the table. Lord, we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit, and together all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. We'll see you down there, friends.